One, this is not a deep fake. Two, I'm truly, truly sorry to our audience. And three, this is way more impactful on video than audio only. So highly encourage you to watch this if you're not already. Don't worry, baby. Google's going to wake you right up. Google's going to come into bed and wake you right up. Don't worry about it, baby. Google wake you right up. As soon as you know it, Google's going to wake you up. You're going to be up once Google has something to say. You're going to be right up with that. I said you're up. You're up. You're up. You're up. You're up. You're up. You're up right now. It doesn't matter if you didn't have any coffee, baby girl's gonna wake you right up. up! All right, I'm, I'm so sorry. That is not ironically the way. Google's gonna wake you up. I did. I think it's Mark Brown not- is getting. He's getting paid. He's getting paid. He knows what he's doing. Oh, he certainly does. Respect. And I think I'm also. It's also just sort of like a perfect encapsulation of where Google is in their life trajectory right now. If this isn't like a midlife crisis, I don't know what it is. All right. So uh, apologies for that. Apologies to that, everyone. We've got quite a bit to cover today. All right. So first and foremost, we'll talk a bit about Google I.O. that you saw that beautiful video from. We can link to that full video in the show notes in case you want to watch a full 20 minutes set from this guy yelling into the mic. However, outside of that, there is a lot of other interesting things that happened at Google I.O. And just to name a few, believe it or not, they're very, very heavily focused on AI. They announced a new model, Gemini 1.5 Pro, which is their newest professional level model they're rolling out. You can have access to now. It has a 2 million token context window. They also announced a lot of new AI tools, a tool called Imagine 3 for images, an AI generated music tool set, a new generated video model called VO. All looked very, very good. They also talked about uh, Project Astra, which is a new initiative, which they said promises to push the boundaries of AI technology and everyday applications. So it seems like they're spinning up a new segment within the business to sort of realize how their AI models can impact people's day-to-day lives. And then last and most controversial, they announced a feature called AI Overview and Search. And it's basically, they described this as Google doing the Googling for you. So they walked through a few examples of what this looked like, but basically instead of having a specific single query, so let's say you, say you want to say like, plan a dinner for me and my wife for our anniversary was the example they use. Instead of just being like, here's a dinner, they have this theory where they can be like, oh, there's a whole full page takeover. It does multimodal reasoning. It serves you a unique box generated from AI, which addresses exactly your query in a way similar to how ChatGPT does it. So those are sort of the highlights. There's still a lot more to talk about here. Warren, how closely have you been following Google I.O. and the new models? The GPT 4.0. Demos and announcements, lots of mind-blowing stuff there, which I'm sure we'll get into. I will say I use Gemini a lot, and the current state of it still leaves a lot to be desired. I think they are starting to lose the race in some ways, at least like with the current version. Like I was trying to book a trip this week, and I was just trying to determine like what hotel was the closest to the event I was going to. And it gave me like two contradictory answers within two queries of each other. Jeez. And I'm just like, can you can you check again? You just said it was a different one was hotel was closer, and it's like, oh yeah, you're right, I was wrong. So definitely, we're in the AI arms race era, and even probably one week to the next, we're going to see like what's mind blowing is just the pace at which things are evolving. Yeah. I mean, I'm not the first person to say this, but like it is impossible to keep up. By the time this podcast is out, there will probably be like another massive development changing everything from today. Yeah, I think it's a really astute point. I also use Gemini recently. I paid for the upgraded version or I did the free trial the upgraded version to see sort of their best commercially available consumer model. Asked it some very, very basic questions like what business unit you divest from last quarter? They're like, they didn't do it. They didn't divest any business units. I'm like, well, I know that's wrong. And I'm like, I know that's wrong. Can you correct that? And it goes, here's the business units that they divested. And I'm like, I don't think that's right. I looked it up. It's the business units they had bought last year. So it's like, it's just objectively like hallucinating all over the place. Well, well and tying that to this idea of AI answers, I love that in theory. Yeah, I've been seeing that in practice, like using Google over the last week or so. I love that you don't have to comb through a bunch of like SEO optimized pages to try to find the one with actual content. But we have at least a short term problem of like AIs say things as fact that are not fact. Like they produce an answer, which is often not the correct answer. I think this is probably a temporary problem as these platforms evolve. But yeah, just we both experienced like similar pain points using AIs in last week where it's just like, yes, here's the answer to your question. And like two seconds of fact checking is like, uh, actually, you're wrong. Um, yeah. 
Well, yeah, I have some thoughts here. So I think it's a Gemini problem. And the reason for that is we can talk about the GPT-40 announcement. GPT-40 was announced Monday of the day before Google I.O. happened. And they did this announcement in a very short form video, about 25 minutes. They announced a new model, which has new multimodal capabilities. It can take input or output in text, audio, visual, which is super, super interesting. We'll talk about that a little bit later. It is a real-time interaction. So I don't think this feature has been rolled out broadly yet. But if you're using like a chat interaction, you could say, you know, what is the distance to the moon? And it could say the distance to the moon is X, Y, Z, and then it'll start keep talking. If you want it to stop, you can either ask a new question or just say stop, which is really meaningful user experience improvement. And then it's also way faster. So 4.0, right. from my experience, it's like, I don't want to say two to three times faster than four, which is what I always used to use. And this meaningfully changes the way that you interact with it because it is not faster for me to use ChatGPT than it is to Google something. And so that's actually meaningfully moved to the way that I behave. So to the point you're making earlier, I tested Gemini and I compared it to GPT-40. GPT-40, to me, the version I've been using is incredible. It's super fast. It's very accurate. And I've been like referencing sources just to make sure, but it seems like it's very accurate. It started adding references. So when you ask it a question, Wait, it gives you that. the link where it got it from. So you can double check the work. And one of the most interesting things is the multimodal input output. So I was doing stuff like asking it to create graphs for me off of data that I asked it for. And it was doing it in like 20 seconds. And so we'll talk a little bit about that more later, but like, I think this is like when you say AI is doing a bad job, I really think it's like Gemini is doing a bad job. Right? When I compare, no, I mean, I mean, seriously, this is just me. This is just my user experience. But like the delta in behavior from that I see from Chappy GBD 4.0 versus Gemini, the pro model, it's like night and day. And what it's happened is I now use ChatGPT more than I use Google, which I would never thought that was going to happen. But that's actually. Yeah, that's why I imagine that, you know, even three months ago. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, my main thoughts here are the main thing that I'm thinking about with GPT-4.0 is I anticipate like a massive uptick in usage, like the accessibility and approachability of it with all of these new levers and use cases. Even the underlying model is also improving, obviously. But even if you set that aside, I think that's the biggest step change with 4.0. When we think about, you know, the AIs or AI-like products that get the most usage today, I'm not going to say them by name because all of my digital Object electronics will scream at me, but Amazon's A-L-E-X-A and Apple's S-I-R-I, but they're both pretty dumb, right? But the reason they get a lot of usage is because they're very easy to interact with. You can yeah. interact with them by voice and with the ability to use cameras, to use voice and the speed of reaction all increasing so much with GPT-4.0. Like watching those demos, I just envisioning so many more moments in my day-to-day -day life where I'm going to start using it. And I think it's going to replace a lot of these other AIs or proto AIs that we use today because it is so multimodal. Is that the right phrase to use? Like and to just have this one AI companion that can be so adaptive that you can use for interpreting visual things, for real-time translation, for asking basic questions. Yeah, it's one of those times, I mean, I'm on an emotional roller coaster with AI as is the rest of the world. Some days it's terrifying. This last week has been one of those times where it's like very exciting and promising. It's more like the what ifs, what are we going to be able to do in the coming years? But yeah, it's weird to say, but kind of an exciting time to be alive and to see this phase of evolution before we get to the scary shit, which I'm sure is just around the corner. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's way more frictionless to the point you're making. Mm -hmm. One of the things that they did with 4.0 is they've managed to decrease the speed, but also increase the efficiency a lot. And so what they've done is as part of that is it. In most cases, it's faster and better. In some cases, for like really big complex analysis, four is still better, is my understanding. But then, because they've gotten the speed down so much that they've taken it away from not only behind the paywall, but behind the registration. So, if you just go to chatgpt.com or whatever the URL is, as a random user, you can just use GPT 4.0, which is crazy. I and mean, that's like, that basically, they're like coming for Google's lunch in that regard. It's like, we want everyone to be using it. Now, I think everything you said is right about the breadth of these models and how widely they're going to be distributed in our life. I think it's really easy for me to sort of like sit back outside the castle and throw rocks at the giant impenetrable wall that is Google. They have one of the best business models of all time. They have the infrastructure of the internet. Not only it's a Chrome, Maps, Drive, you know, na right. name it. Search, I'm obviously Search. Uh, they have the Android after. I mean, like literally it's like you can't like step anywhere in the internet and not be interacting with a Google product. But it is interesting to me that they seem to be so slow rolling out these like custom user facing features in a way that's like actually really, really awesome. It does seem like there is like an atrophying of the muscle of like actually delighting customers there. But I mean, that's just from one customer, right? It's well, Xander, I, I think you touched on like, I keep 
wanting Gemini to be great. Yeah, me too. And part of what I do is for exactly what you mentioned, like I'm so bought into the Google ecosystem and Google's interconnected apps using Maps, using Drive, et cetera, you know, using their, their meeting software or whatever that's called this week, Meet, um, Hangouts, whatever it was in the past. And that vision of the AI being interconnected with all these other Google apps, I think that is the unique angle and value prop that Gemini could do. Obviously, you know, OpenAI, ChatGPT has its its relationship with Microsoft, but like with Google, like it's already built in if they do this right. I think they can have a faster and more effective go-to-market as far as being integrated to all these other Google ecosystem products that people already have core to their life. And that's like Gemini's edge if they can get their act together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to talk just briefly about the AI overviews. Marketers around the world and like publishers in general are freaking out about this box because people are assuming that they're going to be continuing to scrape the data like they have. Historically, what happened, you go, you Google something, you get a list of 10 blue links that slowly transition to, they try and have more, if it's a query about where something is, they show you a map. If it's a query about a product, they show you a product. This is the next step in saying like, hey, listen, like even for the 10 blue links use case, we're going to give you a summary. And this rightfully, I think, is scaring a lot of people whose job it is to publish in news or information online because the assumption is that they're going to be pulling traffic from those websites, which currently are getting that traffic. I think it's a very fair concern. I think we will very likely see a decrease in, or at least a change in traffic usage as it comes from Google. Now, it's fair to freak out about this. Your business might be in danger. That being said, there's nothing you can do about this, right? I mean, like, I guess you could like legislate it, but the reality is this is technology advancing. So what I do think though, is there will be winners in this transition. And so what I mean by that is those who understand how to be ranked first in the new version of Google, which is the AI overview version, because they will have links as well. If you can learn how to play the game to be at the top of that, yes. that is going to be the people who win. And so this is something that me and the team are working on now. It's like, how do we make sure we're ranking the top, we should go games marketing, for instance, we're like at the top of games marketing, but the new world where it describes what is games marketing, I want the link to be to us. <laughs> and so that's the next right. step is how do we make sure that we are the ones who are showing up in that box and getting the credit in the backlink for that. And so this is the game, you're a marketer, <laughs> we can learn how to do it. <laughs> Xander, you stole my hot take. That's what I was going to talk about too. Like this is the new SEO, right? Like yes. how do you become just not the link, but the answer, the yeah. presented, you know, we talked earlier about like the AI is just like presenting information as facts. How can you present your business, your solution as the definitive answer presented by the AI, not one of multiple links, even if it's the top link. Right. I will take one step further. I think we will see an emerging sub-industry as we always do with any new marketing channels of like black hat opportunities here of people that are finding ways to, okay, there's a new version of Gemini out who can be first to market of like how we game this, how we present this link for this like insert sketchy product here or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, there's going to be definitely a black hat industry. I would think of sketchy projects, products trying to grab that definitive answer space of the curated AI answers. So it'd yeah. be interesting to see how that evolves. Yeah, yeah, cool. Clearly, I've been thinking about AI a lot and using it a lot. I think there's a lot more we talk about here, but in the interest of time, to move on to the next topic. 